you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. Good God, Cashmere is just in a mood right now. Um, I'm gonna have to get on to her in a second if she didn't chill out. Man, she's been feeling this weather big time. Um, <clears throat> structure and pooping. <laughs> so, I've been spending all morning cleaning up. Um, Giovanni had horrible, horrible, horrible diarrhea. In fact, a couple of my dogs have gone through it. In fact, I'm going to discreetly um, take a look and make sure that... Yeah, it's actually more firm, so it looks like he's coming out of it. Um, but yeah, he had um, really bad diarrhea last night. Um, like, basically, like water. And so, um, so I had to spend my morning... Um, cleaning that up and I just went ahead and kind of did a deep clean on the kennel room anyway it'll be a lot a lot better once we get the outside kennel set up and and even that kennel room it'll still be a kennel room um but I'll at least get that new flooring put in so that um um so that it's much easier to clean because right now it's carpet and so it's no fun um but anyway, but uh, but beautiful day, really lovely weather, and um, mind you guys. So uh, <clears throat> my best friend and I have been talking all day. We it's crazy how much we're able to get done while talking to each other on the phone. We spend like literally all day on the phone, and um, and we were both up. <laughs> like till 2 a.m. last night going over pedigrees and and just like talking about dogs and we're really really trying what in the world happened here we had a storm come through looks like it I recently um I recently uh got a new um baby gate to keep the dogs out of my bathroom that's the box from that oh fun fact Last night there was a um, scorpion in my bed. Thank God it didn't get me. I luckily was, I shook out my sheets and found it. I was like, not today, Satan. <laughs> so, but I told Alex, I was like, we, we are going to spray this house. Like we're gonna, we've got to do something because I didn't want to. I really just didn't want to do anything. Um, Hey, watch out for my tree. Um, I didn't want to do anything that could hurt my, the, you know, the natural biological ecosystem here. But, I mean, you know, that is... Hey, get out of the trash right now, you bad dog. You get. You go. That's bad. You're a bad dog. She would. Let me tell you something. That dog right there, if there's some kind of trouble to get into, she's going to be the one. Um... But anyway, but scorpions in my bed, it's just, I'm not doing it again. I, I have scars on my chest from the last, from the one that got me. As those of you that, that are new to the channel, you may not know, I got, a, there was a scorpion in my shirt and got me three times in the chest. And um, I'm not doing it again. So, and those scars will be there forever. Like, they're not going nowhere. So, um, so anyway, yeah. So I'm just done with it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention now that I'm mentioning people that have not been here a long time is that I noticed, and I'm very happy for it, that the channel did grow um, substantially while I was sick. Um, um, I was very fortunate that for whatever reason my videos were trending during the time that I was really sick, which was very helpful because it would have... Um, you know, it, it, it just helped out in, in a time when I really couldn't do anything. And, uh, but as usual, anytime my channel grows, um, because of the fact that predominantly my videos have a lot more to do with behavior than they do actually, like, I don't, I don't really use my channel to sell puppies or anything like that. I'm not, I don't put my puppies up and be like, Hey, you know, now if I have a dog that's available, I, I clearly post them, but it's not what my channel is predominantly about. Cashmere, stop. And, um, and so 
and, and, and so every single time that we grow, we always, I always get these people that are like, well, I'm, I'm against breeding. You shouldn't be breeding. There's, you know, until every rescue dog is, has a home, this and this and that. And I get it. Like, um, people are saying what they think that they should be saying. They've been told by animal rights activists and by the rescue people that, um, that, that breeding is bad. And unfortunately, it's a very unscientific argument because what they don't realize is that if there's no one breeding, like let's just say that we that the government stepped in and said, you know what, as long as there's a dog in a shelter that needs a home, you guys cannot breed anymore. Um, it would take more than six years to, you know, it would take more than 10 years to get to get rid of every single shelter dog ever. And the reason for that is because they keep replacing them. Um, many rescue dogs now come from other countries because there's not a big enough um, rescue population here in the States to supply the amount of dogs for the amount of people that are looking here in America. And so, um, and so because of that, they're, they're actually going to places like China for the meat trade and Korea and India and other places that have a very high population of um, feral dogs. Um, or not, like I said, or meat trade dogs. And so because of that, um, it's like, you know, there's, there's basically going to be like a nonstop supply of rescues whenever we're going to other places like that to get, to get the dogs. And, and so there's, there's two things to point out here. One of which is that, A, if you don't breed any breeds for 10 years, you will lose them, Period they'll be gone. That's it. That's all you get. 10 years. Um, heck, I mean, really nine years. Um, and even that is put is, is you'd probably still lose them in nine years. You know what I mean? It, if we're really being honest, I would say six years is generous because, um, because as many of you know, if you, if you don't breed a female dog, um, in six years, the odds are most of them are going to get Palmitra if you haven't already spayed them, you know, they're going to get, um, sicknesses and they're going to die. So their reproductive health is extremely jeopardized by not breeding them. Um, and so you have to ask yourself the question is, are irresponsible people that just let dogs breed indiscriminately, are they more important? Are those dogs more important than breeds that have been formed for hundreds, if not some thousands of years? Okay. Um, I don't believe that. I believe that dogs are works of art. They are no different than um, historical um, buildings. Um, I truly believe that they don't belong to our generation. They belong to the human race as a whole. And that none of us alive today have the right to decide that they should not exist anymore. I just don't. I, don't, I believe that they belong to the human race, not to us just because we're here at this present time. And... Um, and then the other, um, the other thing is, um, is you have to ask yourself is, you know, like I understand us needing to clean up our own mess. You know what I mean? Us needing to, um, to clean up our own overpopulation mess, but that has actually already been fixed. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be bringing in dogs from other countries. Um, there is plenty of homes for the rescue dogs that we have available here in the States in combination with purebred dogs that are being bred um, by responsible individuals here in America. And you have to ask yourself, because the same argument goes for re really anything else that, that could be considered um, needing a home. So if you're to sit here and say that as long as a rescue dog needs a home, no dog should be bred. And that includes, since we're bringing in dogs from other countries, do you also believe that no child should be born until all of the orphans are adopted? Everywhere, all over the world. Every child in India and in any, any third world country um, that is out there, and I'm not saying that India is one, I'm just saying that any of those places where there are lots of, um, of orphans, are you, do you also believe that, that, that we as Americans should not procreate until every single um, child is adopted? Because if you believe that, um, then that's fine, but the same logic should apply. You know what I mean? Um, 
it, you know, it, I, that's just the way that I see it. I, I don't see this to be a logical argument. I see it as an emotional argument and I see it not even so much as even an emotional argument. I see it as, um, as a competitive sales argument, you know? There's a reason that instead of being like, okay, we saved all the rescue dogs here in America, or we saved it to the point that it's not a big deal anymore, now you can breed again, or now it's okay, instead of saying that, now we're saying, actually, no, we're going to go and we're going to bring dogs in from other countries. Well, why is that? You know, why are we, I mean, do you know how much money it costs me to bring a dog over from overseas? On average, $1,300. That's what it's costing me, $1,300 on average. So... Um, Batista, back over here. And so, um, and so anyway, so it just, for me, it just, it just doesn't make any sense that, that, w that, that kind of argument is, is being used. I see it as an industry that, that has people that work in it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's an entire, um, there's thousands of, sorry about that. My phone cut off. Um, it's not supposed to do that. It's not supposed to stop recording to go to a phone call, but it did because it's a Samsung and that's what they do. They suck these days. Um, but anyway, so, um, so like I said, so the issue is, um, let me try to get back on track what I was thinking about now because it lost my train of thought. Um, right. So there's an entire industry built on rescue. Um, there's thousands of people that work. There's plenty of people that foster and they don't make any money off of it all. But there's a lot of people that actually do make quite a good living off rescue dogs. People that, uh, especially state run, like um, the Humane Society, you know, stuff like that. All of those, um, Kashmir, quiet. All of those kinds of organizations, um, they are all... They are all, you know, people work there. They, they get a monthly salary or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like a hourly rate, whatever it is that they're making. They're living off of the premise that there are rescue dogs available. And so we need to start thinking of it as a business and not as just a cause because it's really not. Um, it, they're, they're, I'm not saying that it's still not a worthy cause. Absolutely it is. If there are rescue dogs, they need to get homes. However... When you start bringing in dogs from other countries, it, for me, it becomes less of a cause. You know what I mean? Like if you have enough room in America to bring in dogs from other countries, then you have enough room for people to be able to choose if they want a purebred dog or not. Um, you know, in my opinion, this is a, an industry that is trying to stay alive. And um, they don't want to, all these people that are making, and there are, um, uh, there's a there's a company here in Austin called Austin Pets Alive, and if you look at their, um, they actually post their tax returns. They're making you know quite a bit of money, and it's I mean if you think about it, it's straight profit. Um, I used to work for a I didn't work I volunteered for a local um, it was like a low cost um, spay neuter and health clinic called Animal Trustees of Austin, and we used to do free spay and neuter. For rescues and we also did a lot of um, of surgeries for those dogs like life-changing tumor removals things like that and so the idea that these rescues are just spending absorbent amounts of money on health care is is actually inaccurate it's not true in Austin Texas specifically um, I don't care if you're rescue or not if, if you wake up early enough you can take your dog um, to emancipate locations and have them spayed or neutered for free so these are um, people that are that are not breeding. They have no investment in these animals, um, at, at least not many of them. Very few of them is there any investment on. And then um, and then they take these animals and they sell them to you for hundreds of dollars, about as much as a lot of backyard breeders charge on Craigslist. So you know they're they're and not to mention they get lots of grants, lots and lots of grants. I mean, like I said, just just Google Austin Pets Alive um, tax returns and and you'll see you'll see the millions that I'm talking about. So those companies, though people running those, those agencies, they do not want to quit their jobs and go find another job that's gonna pay as much as they're making with the ability to do what they wanna do, which is you know working with animals. And so I see the whole adopt, don't shop thing as a, um, as a marketing ploy. That's what I see it as. I see it as a way of saying, of guilt tripping people that really don't know any better and aren't going to take the time to actually figure it out 
um, that, um, that you should not buy a purebred dog. You should only rescue, you know, that's all you should ever do is rescue. And, um, it's just, it's, it's unscientific. It's not true. And, um, and, and in my opinion, it's, it's extremely irresponsible because our generation does is basically saying that they get to decide for every other human being out there and for generations to come that you don't get to have a Connie Corso, you don't get to have a German Shepherd, you don't get to have a Husky or a Greyhound or whatever, because, you know, we have to find homes for all the rescue dogs in the world everywhere. You know what I mean? We have to clean up the mess of every other country out there that has no vested interest in spaying and neutering. I mean, there's, especially whenever you're taking animals from, um, from the meat trade. I mean, you're, this is a never ending supply. You know, it's literally a never ending supply. On top of it, a lot of rescues actually get their dogs from puppy mills. They, they get them in auction. And I mean, like, not like, like we're talking like, um, like way different puppy mills than what you're thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like we're talking these people that have these huge kennels and they're pristine clean and, and they're, they're the type of um, animals that are just really bred on mass. They're not really handled very much. You know, it's, it's more like how people breed cows, but it's very clean. That's how they're able to stay in business um, is through having, um, I think they're even like USDA um, facilities. And so, whereas like people like me are considered like hobby breeders, you know, um, kind of like, like your organic farm, you know, versus your, um, you know, your big agricultural farms. Right. So, um, and so anyway, so if you're the type of person that's like adopt, don't shop, I, I simply ask that you at least educate yourself on the reality of the industry and where these animals are coming from. I will provide a bunch of links at the bottom of this video um, to really show you guys that these animals are coming in. And not only are they coming in, but they're oftentimes bringing many diseases that our dogs have either not been exposed to or are that different variants. Like there was a, a different version of um, distemper that came through. And these diseases have killed off many dogs here, both rescue and purebred. Um, here in America because we didn't have vaccinations for this kind of stuff. So um, so it's, it's, it's more than just an ethical issue. It's, it's, or as far as like a, like a it's, not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily just a moral argument, but also an ethical argument of, do you have the right to bring in animals from overseas because you have an emotional attachment to them whenever those animals actually pose a risk to the entire American population of animals, both rescue and non-rescue. Um, so like I said, the whole, you know, like these people that sit there and they say, well, I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about breeding whenever there's still, um, you know, shelter dogs that need a home. I'm sorry, but that is an, a completely illogical and unscientific argument and it makes me roll my eyes every time it's very hard for me to be patient and understanding of that type of argument because it's it's such lazy thinking you know it's like you you had a thought somebody told you something it sounded good and you're just like all right that's it and you had no critical thinking associated with it you didn't even bother to think about whether or not that would have any lasting effects on dogs in general you know um batista no ma'am or no sir back over here now, so if you, now, let's go. If you, um, if you're one of those PETA people that just believes that dogs shouldn't be pets, or if you're one of those, um, and this is actually where I think a lot of this whole adopt, don't shop thing is, I actually, I have my suspicion that it actually has more to do with the environmental extremists that believe that dogs are a luxury and that they are a environmental tax, you know, that they are, taking resources away from the environment like you know they eat a lot of food and they make a lot of waste and they're producing co2 and there's a lot of people i don't know if any of you guys ever watched i think it was that zeitgeist film or whatever and it, it the it sounded all great and then the last <laughs> the last movie that they put out it was like they show that really what they want is people living in these cities and and to not have any interaction with nature and they want it to leave it untouched and it's like if you believe in that well then of course yes you're gonna not want people to have dogs because that that isn't gonna work you know what i mean like dogs require food um, they eat a lot of the, like, you know, their food has a lot of, um, vegetable matter and meat matter, um, in it. And so 
they're 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 consuming resources, right? Um, and there's people that believe that the that the human population is too big, and so if that's your argument, then of course, yeah, it makes sense to say, yeah, don't don't shop because in reality, you know, you're preventing the creation of new animals. You know what I mean? Like people will get to have dogs now, but in a very short amount of time you will have decimated the breeding pool to the point that it will be completely unsustainable. We will lose all these breeds that we've developed, um, some of which, like I said, have lasted thousands of years, like the Chinese Crescent. And not to mention, I think that it's highly, highly, highly arrogant to assume that we'll never need them again, you know, because dogs were never originally um, produced for pets. They were to help us with um, our daily jobs and stuff. They were for hunting protection, like I, in, the, in the case of the Chinese Crescent, um, I think they were even used for warmth. So there's a lot that, that animals were used for, for working, or dogs were used for, for working person. In fact, most domesticated animals were either used for work or meat, one of the two, and some both. And um, in fact, many both. And, and the idea that we will never need them again, in my opinion, is extremely arrogant. And, and, and very short-sighted. If you know anything about the history of our world, you will know that there's no reason to assume that nothing will ever happen. Because what we do know is that something always happens. I don't know. I mean, I, I love research stuff. And um, the human population went through a pretty big bottleneck at one point. And, um, and in fact, I was watching this one thing on YouTube. They were talk, it, was a, it was a show about doppelgangers. I think it was by BBC. And they were talking about how, how frequent it is that we will see people that actually are as, as, as identical as us as twins, although we may not share any ancestry. And the reason for that, they said, is because we are actually a lot more inbred than people would like to assume. We're a lot more, we're a lot like the dogs that, um, the purebred dogs, in fact, that people, um, that people love to hate for that very reason. And, um, and so the idea that we won't need dogs again, that, that, you know, that we'll never need a husky to be able to run through, um, the terrain like they did the one time whenever they, um, brought, I believe it was a vaccine that was so important. Um, I mean, it just, I, I just think that it's incredibly, incredibly ignorant if I'm being entirely honest. And, and I, I get it. Like people have feelings and you, and you see a dog in a shelter and it hurts your heart. And, you know, and if that's the case, then, then that's awesome. And you should, you should rescue that dog. You know, you should be there and you should do that. But what you should not do is tell everybody else what they should be able to do. You know, maybe the reason that you exist with that big old heart is to be able to provide homes for those dogs, but that's not everyone. Not everyone is called to do the same things in life. You know, I personally find no interest in, in having rescue dogs. Doesn't mean that I won't rescue one. Of course I will. As many of you know, I've already done it. Ah, 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 back over here now. But I personally prefer purebred dogs. You know, I just do. That's just me personally. That's my preference. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the world is um, full of all different kinds of people. And I, sorry, the phone cut off again. I don't know what I'm going to have to do to make this thing stop interrupting whenever I'm doing a video. Um... But anyway, but, you know, like it said, it takes all kinds of, like Maryland number 10, um, it takes all kinds of people and, um, you know, and, um, and that's what it is. And so, like I said, if you want to rescue, that's awesome. That's beautiful that you're called to do that. There's plenty of people that are called to, um, to do adoption and to do foster care. And that's awesome. But the thing, the problem is whenever people go around dictating what other people should be doing with their lives, you know, um, just because there's an animal in a shelter does not mean that, that nobody should be able to breed a dog or that nobody else should be able to have a purebred dog. It just, it, it's not true. And if you believe that, then I'm sorry, but you're, you're, you're being very short-sighted and you're really doing a lot more harm than good. And, and you're doing harm in such a way that it cannot be reversed. You know, there's, um, there are plenty of animals that are extinct, plenty of different breeds of dogs that have gone extinct and you can't just bring them back. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just something to think about. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope this hasn't been interrupted too much with these phone calls that keep coming through. I'm not sure what I'm going to have to do to fix that. Maybe put my phone on Do Not Disturb. And hopefully that'll help. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. And I will talk at you later. Bye.